Welcome to this BBB industry segment on meters and test equipment. Yeah, everybody needs to know how to use these meters and all the test equipment to work on today's cars. So let's get started. You know, diagnosing these cars is going to take 50% of the time. Half the time you're going to spend in the book work, looking at schematics to figure out what's wrong with them. And you have to use this test equipment and be confident with it in order to fix them right the first time. Things like these VAT 40s and of course this voltmeter. And the DVOM is not the only meter we're going to teach you about. We're going to teach you about this test equipment, this VAT 40, this VAT 45, the 3750, and this handheld tester. Yeah, we'll even look at some meters that perhaps you shouldn't be using. Something like this little one here. This is only capable of about 100 amps. Start loading bad batteries up to 250, 300 amps. Not a good idea. And then you have this analog voltmeter. This is low impedance. Low impedance meters, a little dangerous for computer circuits. I got a feeling there won't be any test lights in this video. No, no test lights here. The manufacturers put this equipment in to meet OEM specifications. This is good stuff. It deserves proper testing. We're going to be going over amps, volts, and resistance, and if you need a refresher, look at our fundamentals video. Yeah, there's a lot here, so buckle up, let's get started. Now this one's for volts and ohms. Let's start out with AC voltage. I got my spark tester here, I went ahead and set my meter to alternating volts, and now I got my leads here, and what I'm gonna do is I'll unplug my crank sensor here and go across it with these two leads. And then I'm going to turn my, my spark tester on, and I'm going to start generating a voltage. And there it is. What you're actually generating is an AC voltage. That's an alternating current. That's a magnetic pickup, a permanent magnet. It's using a magnetic field to induce a voltage into that sensor in order to make a voltage. Wheel speed sensors, vehicle speed sensors, crank, cam, a lot of them use that. And we'll cover that in detail in the magnetism series. Let's switch over to DC volts. Now DC volts, car uses DC volts all over, direct current. That's basically what a battery produces and everything uses. We always measure volts in parallel. So what he's gonna do, he can do two different measurements. He can simply come across the battery and what he's measuring there is a voltage drop or potential difference from the positive to the negative. And he's showing his voltage right there at 13.51. That's what the battery is capable of producing. That's a voltage drop from the positive to the negative cable. Now we can also do voltage at a point. He can come right here and go to this starter lead. And what he has is same thing, 13.57 or 51. We can take that mathematically, find out our voltage drops or whatever's going on with the circuit and diagnose it. Now our last style is millivolts. Millivolts is anything under a volt. Now we start dealing with some knock sensors. These are little piezoelectric generators that sense vibrations in the coolant. They generate less than a volt. And then of course your oxygen sensor. Now your oxygen sensor, anywhere from 100 millivolts to 900 millivolts fluctuating. It's a sine wave, but it's still a DC voltage. I went ahead and switched my dial over to ohms, a Greek sign for omega, resistance. Now resistance is in everything. Resistance is opposition to current flow. Opposition to current flow. Any windings of wires, we have an ECT. This is an engine coolant temperature sensor. And what he is, he's a thermistor. He's a variable resistor, but a resistor nevertheless. So if you go across those two terminals, from one side to the other, we're making a reading. We're making continuity and a resistance value. Now this resistance will change with temperature if it's a negative coefficient or a positive coefficient. This injector, a little bit different. We're just going in with the wire windings and we're using magnetic induction, once again, magnetism, to pick up that solenoid and put him down to open and close that injector. Now you could read those windings. That will actually have a specification. You can look it up in your service manual and it'll tell you if you have a good or bad injector. Door lock, same thing, solenoids, open and close. Now resistance is good, but I wanna show you a little demonstration here that sometimes I don't like resistance when we start using heavy amp circuits, starters, you start drawing massive amount of amperage, and I'll show you why. We got two battery cables here. Now this one, this one is a brand new, nice brand new battery cable, everything's intact. We skin the wires back, and Chase is hooking up ohms of resistance. How much do we have there? We got about 0.1. All right, now if we go this one here, we skinned him all the way down. We only left a couple of strands. If we measure him, it's 
We have about, about the same point, thing. About, about, the, about, yeah. the, same, about yeah. the same. All right. The point is, is that you're going to have the same resistance values. This may be one. This may be three. That's not enough ohms of resistance in my mind to tell me there's nothing wrong with the cable. But if you try to pump some amps through here, starting motors are drawing 300 amps. You put 300 amps through here, this is nothing more than a fusible link. It's exactly. going to burn. Now these starters are designed to operate on a specific amount of amperage. You've got electro counter EMF coming back. These things are designed to operate properly. So voltage drop is the way to go. You can just switch your meter back to volts. And in DC volts, if he went across that wire, what he would find, if we put pressure into it, we don't have any pressure here, but if he put pressure and we started running some electrons through, you're going to have a massive voltage drop right there, and this guy would have relatively none. Next on the dial, we got continuity and diode test. Continuity is nothing more than checking a wire, maybe from the front of the car to the back of the car. You go across that wire, meter beeps, you got continuity. Now a diode check in our magnetism series, we'll talk all about diodes and what they do, but they're a one-way check valve. And if he just goes across one side to the other, he's got a beep, you know that we're getting continuity, we know it's functioning in that direction, reverse the leads and go in the other direction, and it blocks the flow. It's an electrical one-way check valve. That's a good look at diodes and continuity. Next on the meter is amperage. Now to measure amperage, we're going to switch down here to amps. We have AC amps and DC amps. Now cars deal mostly in DC amps, but one important thing we have to do is shunt the meter. That means we're going to take it over to a fuse part of that meter. And when we fuse it, we're protecting that meter. Chase, why don't you show them the internal workings of that meter and show them some fuse. Go ahead and take it apart and I'll demonstrate amps over here. Okay. Now on my amps, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this low circuit. I don't want a lot of amps. I can't do this with 10 amps or more. Blower motors, starter motors draw a lot more than 10 amps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the low amp side of just the start circuit of the solenoid. Now to measure amps, I have to run them through the meter. I'm actually going to go in series and complete the circuit. That's important that you have the circuit completed because the circuit's going to have to function. That electromotive force, that pressure is going to push the electrons through the meter and he's going to count them. So if I got it set up on DC amps, I got the meter shunted, all I have to do now, run the car, and I get an amp draw. Now, that's a small amp draw. That'll tell us if components are working right, not working right. If I went to that and it was more than 10 amps, I end up blowing a fuse. And you don't want to do that. Chase, show them what happens. All right, what happens is, is a lot of people throw their meters in the garbage because it's not working correctly and they simply just blew a fuse inside their meter. They have a, a large fuse and a small fuse. And all you got to do is if you have another meter or something you can test that fuse and go across those fuses and see if it's good. And if you're noticing there's no continuity there so it's a bad fuse and we need to change that and your meter will be working properly once you repair that. Yeah and that's how you save an expensive meter. Hey let's go take a look at the car and some of that real test equipment. All right, let's look at some of these testers that you can use to test the battery, charging, and starting systems. You need to use these testers and be confident with them. The first test we're going to start out with is the battery load test. It's very critical that you know that the starting and charging system is working correctly. Yeah, in order to do that, you go ahead and hook up yours, and I'll show them on this training board. What we're doing is we're going to test the battery, okay, the load capacity of the battery. Actually, how many amps can it push out, and a specific amount of voltage has to stay. So what I'm going to do, and he's doing over there is the same thing. I'm just going to hook up the negative battery cable to the negative on the battery. Then I come over and I hook the positive up. And I'm simply going to take an amp probe. This amp probe is going to measure the electrons running through the machine. I have a carbon pile on this machine that's actually going to draw the amps out of this battery and it should hold. So what I need to do for this test is I need to take this battery, it's 500 cold cranking amps, and cut it in half. So that's about 250 cold cranking amps. I'm going to go ahead and dial it up, have that for 15 seconds, and we shouldn't drop below 9.6 volts. All right, I'm going to take this knob and turn it until I get about 250 amps. I'm going to hold that for 15 seconds, and that's going to tell me the condition of the battery. Now, your tester? Yeah, over on this electron tester, all you have to do is simply hook up your connections and follow the prompts on the screen. It's very simple. It's fully automatic. There's no manual work involved. 
Yeah, and we go through a whole troubleshooting in another video. That'll give us a good look at just the hookups. It's important though, please, the battery is the key to the system. Starters create counter electromotive force that comes up the wire. We want to make sure that battery is in good shape or you're going to do damage to your starting system. You just saw a battery load test. Next, we'll do a starting system draw test. But before we do that, remember when you're load testing a battery, you don't want to use something that's not going to be capable of handling the amperage in the system. So that's not a good choice. If you're going to use a handheld, use a conductance tester. A little safer for the system, better to use, a little more accurate. Now, for the starting system test, we're going to keep the hookups exactly the same, but this time we're going to take the amp probe and put it in a different place. You can show them on the car while I hook this up over here. Okay. All right. Now, the amp probe, instead of going to the negative cable going down to the machine, I'm simply going to take the amp probe and I'm going to go around the hot wire going to the starter, the massive amp draw. That's why it's an inductive pickup. I can't run that one through my meter. There's much too much amperage running to that starter to do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to count the amps when I turn the key, the current's going to flow, and I'll see them right here on my dial here. So I'll simply turn it over, and you got to see the amps. Now that's a free running test, there's no load on it. If you had some mechanical resistance, thick oil, some problems with your engine, your amperage is going to go up. Now electrical resistance on the other hand, that may cause amperage to go down. And we'll get into that more in troubleshooting. And over here on this automatic machine, once again, hook up your cables and just follow the prompts on the screen and just go crank your car and get your output test. Yeah, using these machines is going to give you a good diagnosis of your starting system. Our last test is the charging system test. We said earlier, they all run off the same premise. So keep your positive and negative hooked up. Just take your amp probe this time and go around the back of the alternator. We want to look at the current that that alternator is putting out. Fire up your car, follow the prompts, run it to 2000 RPM. Make sure your alternator's charging. Now these tests, all these tests, we got to look at the DVOM and we got to look at all these meters. Whether you're an experienced technician, master level, novice tech, or just working on your car in the backyard, it's critical to use this professional equipment in order to test your system right. Starters, alternators depend on voltage, amperage, and current. All that stuff has to happen right for them to operate properly. We covered a lot of information in a short period of time. We talked about these DVOMs and all the meters that can help you test electrical systems, starting systems, charging systems, batteries, and any electrical problem on the vehicle. I can't stress the importance of circuit integrity, making sure that the voltage, the amperage, and the resistance is right on all these circuits. The components depend on it. They operate in a specific parameter that dictates what kind of voltage is going to it. So it's your job to do that, whether you're a professional technician in a shop, a master technician, or you're just working on the car in the backyard. It doesn't make any difference. This voltmeter will help you do it right the first time. And for more information on problems and troubleshooting issues, log on to BBBIND.com. Yeah, on that website, you'll find troubleshooting tips. You'll find a wire diagram for the entire vehicle. TSBs, free, which is nice all kinds of stuff on that website. Tune in and look at it. Now remember, BBB products are preferred by the professional installer. Thanks for watching.